So since this is probably the single most asked question, today I'm gonna show you how my salary has changed from 2K per month to earning almost 170,000 euros per year, to how I completely turned my life around and I'm on track to earn more than I ever have. But not gonna lie, it was a bumpy ride to get there. That was my very first full-time paycheck and that was before tax. It wasn't much, but I was happy to have landed my first job as an IT management trainee, especially considering the fact that I actually worked as a tech recruiter for a very brief period, but that turned out to be a mistake because I realized that recruitment was definitely not something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So I quit after just one month. Even though I actually earned more as a recruiter in that one month than as a trainee, you can see my happiness was lower. So I quit recruitment, got hired as a trainee, earned less, but I was more happy. But the next year, I already got two salary increases. First, a monthly salary of 2.2k, and then half a year later, I earned 2.4k. But the very next year, in 2017, once my two-year IT management traineeship came to an end, the telecom company hired me directly, which led to a 45% increase in my salary. I don't know if this also led to a 45% increase in my happiness, but I definitely felt more recognized and valued at my job, which probably increased my happiness as well. At this point, I was earning around 4K per month before tax. And this period in my life I call the climb. And most people working a 9 to 5 get stuck here. This is the phase where you climb the corporate ladder. So either you get a 2-3% salary increase every year or you compete with your team for a more senior position to get a promotion or maybe even a management position or if you're smart you switch companies every four years because this almost always leads to a 20% increase in your salary. So that's exactly what I did in 2018. I got an offer from Heineken and even though I wasn't really looking for a new job because I was comfortable at my current job, earned a decent salary, had great colleagues, eventually I did accept their offer and this is one of the main reasons why. This is where I used to live. And this... And this is the office where I worked at. My daily commute would decrease from two hours to almost two minutes. And the other reason was that I would get a 30% increase in my salary, meaning I would earn about 5k per month before tax. And at first this increased my happiness a lot. Not just because I was earning more or that I could walk to the office, but because things were exciting. Working at a big multinational for the first time, this dynamic environment made me improve my data analysis skills by a lot. And as you can imagine, the after work drinks at Heineken were great. I kind of could see myself climbing the corporate ladder here. Maybe get a nice management position, get a decent salary, get a nice car get a nice house. But the longer I worked there, the more I realized that working in corporate office environments was just like squid games. So very quickly, my happiness started to drop. First slowly and then suddenly. Because working at the office, I realized that working overtime was normal. Sending emails while you're on vacation was normal. Sitting in useless meetings almost every day was normal. You had to dress formally, you had to speak formally. Everything you said could be used against you. Or even worse, it could get you fired. That. And all of these things went against my principles. Because I wanted to live a life of freedom where I can do whatever I want. A life where I can spend time with friends and family. A life where I can do meaningful, fulfilling and creative work. A life where I can have fun and laugh most of the time. But climbing this corporate ladder made me realize that I was climbing the wrong ladder. I had to switch ladders. So I did switch ladders. And this is where the master plan part one was born. And the plan was simple. Escape the nine to five and travel the world. How? Well, this brings me to the launch. So 2019, just a year and a half later after starting at Heineken, I quit my job and started working as a freelance data analyst. I found a full-time freelance project with an hourly rate of 80 euros. This quite literally tripled my income from 5k a month to 15k a month. Sure, I'd have more costs as a freelancer, but bottom line, I had way more cash to spend and invest on myself, on some side projects I was working on and other investments. The step to freelancing tripled my income and arguably it tripled my happiness as well. What first seemed like a very risky move to quit my permanent stable job at Heineken, where managers literally laughed at me for taking such a risk to start freelancing, turned out into me earning more than my managers while working less. And this definitely increased my self-confidence, my fulfillment, and my happiness. And I still don't understand how so many tech professionals currently working a normal job in IT are not seeing the opportunity of freelancing. But in case you are thinking about becoming a freelancer, so you can triple your income, have more free time and more location freedom, but you just 
don't know where to start or how to find the highest paid projects, I launched a five part course called the Six Figure Tech Freelancer. And it's completely free. In the course, I explain exactly how to attract high paying projects so you don't have to apply yourself, how much to charge, I share my endless client strategy and much more. And the whole course is available in my nine to five to dream life community also free to join but you have to apply first by clicking the link in the description so for just over two years i worked as a freelance data analyst for two big clients a big dutch bank and an online auctioning platform and somewhere in those two years i increased my hourly rate from 80 an hour to 85 an hour earning more than 350 000 euros in just like two years which is insane thinking about it especially since I had like four years of work experience before I started freelancing. And I could have started freelancing way earlier, but I just thought I needed a lot of work experience before I can take the jump to freelancing. Spoiler alert, you don't. But I was just scared to take the jump, just like most people stuck in a nine to five or in life in general. You know what also scared me shitless? Uploading my first YouTube video because I was earning so much money as a freelancer while working less that I both had the time and the money to work on a side hustle based on one of my old passions, creating videos. But I was so afraid of what other people would think if I would start creating videos again as a grown-up. And I almost didn't upload that first YouTube video. But I did. The dream life. For 15 months, I traveled literally around the world while creating YouTube videos and growing my personal brand. And even though I worked from the most beautiful places in the world and had the craziest adventures, my income in 2022 was on average only around 2.1K a month, which mostly came from YouTube AdSense and some brand deals. In my worst months, I only earned around 400 euros a month, but in my best month that year, I earned six and a half thousand euros. As you can imagine, it was quite a roller coaster. yet my happiness was at an all time high. But how did I pay for all those travels and crazy adventures with only 2.1K a month? Well, I also lived off money that I've saved up working as a freelancer the years before. And that's what freelancing has enabled for me. Earning enough money to try and grow my own business while traveling the world. I had enough resources to accomplish my master plan part one. Escape the nine to five and travel the world. But did I actually achieve my master plan? Well, I definitely did travel the world. But did I actually escape the nine to five? Well, before I share if I actually escaped the nine to five, I just want to share the two crucial things that made it possible to try and escape the nine to five in the first place. And the first one was obviously becoming a freelance data analyst. But before you can become a freelance data analyst, you need to become a data analyst. And before you can become a data analyst, there's four things you need. Experience with Excel or SQL, experience with BI tools like Power BI and Tableau, hands-on experience with real data projects, and industry recognized certification. And what if I told you there is a way we can get all four of these plus a 50% discount on highly in-demand certifications? Well, welcome to DataCamp, the online platform I wish I had when I was trying to become a data analyst myself. In fact, DataCamp offers specific career tracks like the data analyst in Power BI or the data analyst in Python to fast track your way to a data analyst career. Oh, too complex because you're still a beginner? DataCamp has you with, for example, the Power BI fundamentals, SQL fundamentals, or AI fundamentals. Oh, too easy? Well, what about the large language model concepts, working with the OpenAI API, from theory to interactive exercises to real life projects to industry recognized certifications? DataCamp is your go to place for all of this. And here's the best part since DataCamp is sponsoring this video, they're letting me give away a 25% discount to my audience. Oh, yeah, you're only recommending DataCamp because they're paying you to say this. Listen, I said it before and I'll say it again. I've been recommending DataCamp for years already, long before they paid me a single dime to say this. And I haven't changed my mind in the meantime. In fact, DataCamp has only gotten better and better. So if you're actually serious about landing a job in data analytics, want some hands-on work experience and discounts on certification exams, then check out DataCamp by clicking the link in the description. And now we enter the most challenging chapter of my life. The Lonely Chapter. April 2023. We just came back from a trip around the world. TV Crips, moving back edition. And initially things were going great. It was good to be back home and see our friends and family again. 
And as I continued to create YouTube videos, things were growing financially as well. That year in 2023, I made around 100,000 euros. Around 30,000 euros came from YouTube AdSense. Next to that, I started selling my Monk Mode Notion template, which is a template for Notion for my daily journaling practice slash weekly planning tool. And it got really popular. It got sold over a thousand times, earning me more than 10,000 euros that year. And as my channel grew, I started working with bigger and cooler brands like Athletic Greens, Notion, and Hostinger earning me a total of around 10 to 15,000 euros in brand deals and sponsorships. I also started coaching people both on the topic of YouTube strategy, but also helping tech professionals become high paid freelancers, which gave me another source of income that year. But unlike freelancing, we don't have a lot of expenses. I now had considerably more costs as a business. I had thumbnail designers, video editors, and salespeople I needed to pay. I invested in new gear in new tools and coaches, so overall of that 100k, my profit was only about 65k before tax. I've had months where I earned just around 2000, which was the same amount as my first data analyst salary eight years prior. And in those months, I had to draw from my savings account just to pay the bills that month. I would lie if I said I didn't experience some financial stress that year. But overall, could I say I escaped the nine to five? Yeah. I could live of the income generated by my business. I could work on what I want, whenever I want, from wherever I want. I had no boss telling me what to do and I didn't have to attend useless meetings. But here comes the catch. And I didn't see this coming. Even though I might have escaped the nine to five, no one around me has. Meaning that coming back from this adventure where I could hike a mountain on a Tuesday morning and go play paddle on a Wednesday afternoon, all my friends were still working a nine to five job, meaning nobody was available to do all these things on a random working day. My girlfriend also started working, meaning we couldn't just hop on a plane anymore and go to Bali and live there for two months. I escaped the nine to five to mostly work from home and the coffee place right around the corner, which by the way, completely messed up my posture throughout the day, which contributed to me f***ing up my neck completely during Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Two bulging discs in my neck five month recovery. And next to that, nobody really understood what I was doing. Often I had family members or in-laws ask me, are you still vlogging? Still making your little YouTube videos? Still don't have a real job? But they just didn't understand that this was all part of my master plan. But still, I was lonely working on something nobody understands. But then I realized that this is all part of the journey. The more books I've read, the more podcasts I listen to, the more entrepreneurs I talk to, the more I realize that this is a phase you have to go through. If you're going through that right now, and like, and I promise you, every single person who wants to do something with their life and has done something with their life has gone through the exact chapter that you're going through. And it's the lonely chapter. It's the chapter where you, you're, you don't fit in with your own friends, but you don't have the outcomes yet to fit into a new group of friends. And, and, you're, and you're going through this and you're like, Am I, is this even worth it? Because you have no signs of success, right? And what you can't do is bend the knee and fit back into the conformity because it's comfortable and it's warm because like in the matrix, when Trinity opens the door, when, when Neo's about to go take the red pill and he wants to get out of the car, she says, Neo, you've been down that road and you know exactly where it leads. And I know that's not where you wanna be. There's just no way back. I could never go back to a regular nine to five office job ever again. As Navar Ravikant said, a taste of freedom can make you unemployable. I just had to keep working on my master plan part two. But as Mike Tyson said, everybody has a plan until you get punched in the face. And I got punched hard that year because something unexpected and outside of my control happened in my life that had a big impact on me mentally. Nothing health related, luckily, but I'm not ready to share it in full detail yet because I'm still going through it right now. And it caused a lack of energy, a lack of motivation, a lack of creativity. I started creating less videos because my mind was just not there. I felt lost. I had self doubt and I felt even more lonely. I often wanted to seclude myself and just work out or work on my business. So 2023 and 2024 were the most challenging years of my life. And even though I worked harder than I ever have, the output just wasn't there. And uh, I'm trying to pump out some videos here. But man, I can't fucking talk. I have to retake all the videos. My eyes are so 
heavy, I'm so tired, but I gotta pump out these last videos. For the first time in a long time, I started thinking about giving up on my dreams. I started playing with the idea of going back to being a full-time data analyst again. I actually started applying to jobs again. This was rock bottom for me. But when you're down, the only way is up, right? And I remembered what Mike Tyson also said. Sometimes they punch you back in the face. <laughs> so I punched back. I just worked harder than ever on my business, worked harder than ever at the gym, and just realized I cannot go back. There's nothing else I can do than work through it. I had to push through. So I started creating videos again. I started traveling again. I met cool new people, expanded my team, successfully launched a free community with over 5,000 people who want to escape the nine to five. My tech freelancing coaching grew into a successful mastermind filled with people literally changing their lives. I picked up the momentum again. And in 2024, I made another 100K again. Yes, my income didn't grow compared to the year before. And yes, I had many setbacks and everything I did felt super heavy and difficult because of the shit I was going through. But that's life. Challenges, setbacks, and life throwing curveballs at you while you're trying to achieve your goals and dreams. And my new goal and plan was called the Master Plan Part 2. And there's two parts to the plan. And the first part is make a million. Not more, not less. And here's exactly how I plan on doing that. One keep growing my personal brand by creating better and more videos. And I'll do that by working together with one of my best friends who's gonna help me out with shooting and editing content. Two, keep growing my freedom freelancing mastermind by helping tech professionals escape the nine to five by becoming high paid tech freelancers as fast as possible. And I'll do that by becoming the number one community in the world for tech freelancers by having the best guest lectures, the best coaches, and the best network filled with clients projects and recruiters. Three, only work with big and cool brands like Datacamp. And four, launch my own physical product. More info coming soon. But the important thing here is that I set 1 million as a goal, but also as an absolute limit. Because as soon as I hit the million dollar mark, instead of growing my business more and more by hiring more people, making the business more complex, having more dependencies and responsibilities, I'd rather keep it at 1 million and scale down make the business as lean and as simple as possible. Because my goal is not to buy expensive watches and private jets and yachts. My goal is to have enough financial freedom, location freedom and time freedom so I can put my heart and soul into the second part of the master plan part two. Grow a happy family. Cheers.